Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Baldwin number 0600. This is a flush bolt uh, from Baldwin. This is the 0600. This is an 18 inch size flush bolt from Baldwin. Um, and this video is going to show the 190 finish, which is a black finish. They do a heck of a job on the, on the packaging. There's no doubt. Everything. I'm, I'm a major fan of Baldwin. I like everything they do. Um, I use their products personally. Um, I can attest to what's excellent about their product line. I can t attest to what I wish was a little bit different um, to their product line. This is a substantial piece of equipment here. So here's the business end. Very nice packaging. Okay. There are a lot of people who make decorative hardware. There are companies that Baldwin has competition from, in my opinion, are of lower quality. Um, imported material. Baldwin has competition from boutique manufacturers as well. But I think Baldwin sits in an exceptionally nice confluence of very high quality and cost. You can always spend less, and you can sure the heck spend a lot more but when it comes to a manufacturer who's been around for decades, who knows um, fine commercial builder's hardware for commercial and, of course, residential use, Baldwin meets that criteria very well every time. This is their this is this is an otherwise typical flush bolt. 190 finish. It is a typical flush bolt in the sense that it has a standard footprint. Six and three quarter by one. This is what's called a manual extension flush bolt because you have to manually operate the extension okay, of the rod. This is a piece of threaded rod. Um, this is not your standard threaded rod, something tells me. Most definitely not. Standard extent manual and automatic uh, flush bolts by most manufacturers are quarter 20 rod. This is 5 16 This is a heavier rod, um, which means that it's going to be obviously more robust, more durable. That bolt head is threaded on. Okay, You can therefore tailor your projection. And there's no doubt that it's a tougher rod. Um, you can, with uh, enough use... And maybe a little bit of abuse. You can bend that rod, no doubt. Um, so be mindful. This is a thicker rod than standard. Okay. Uh, this is going to include a strike and a matching finish. That's probably going to be two and a quarter by 15 sixteenths is my guess. Two and a quarter, right? Uh, yeah, just shy on one inch. So 15 sixteenths. That's shown in a black finish. Okay. Typical 50 thousandths or so material thickness. This is going to include a guide. You always have to have a rod guide. And this appears to be, I would want this to be steel. No, it's not. This is, There's nothing magnetic about this at all. It's either zinc or brass would be my guess. Okay. Now you'll notice that there is a D-shaped profile there. And you'll notice that that same profile is in your bolt. You absolutely need to have that work together. You can't have the bolt head spinning or unthreading. If you were to not use a rod guide like this in the top or bottom of the door, that bolt head is going to rotate with time. Eventually you'll work the bolt and the rod won't come back up or the bolt head will drop off, roll away somewhere. So you have to have this installed on your door. Then of course you'll get uh, fasteners. Uh, yeah, you'll need eight total. So you'll get four for the lock body, two for the strike, two for the rod guide. Now this is what's called an 18 inch flush bolt, an 18 inch. Now nowhere on this rod is it gonna measure 18 inch. Nowhere, with the bolt head measure about 16 and 3 quarter. That's because flush bolts are sized based on the top of the door to the center of the prep 
to the center of the prep or the bottom of the door to the center of the prep. Okay. Now the question becomes is where do you use an 18 inch flush bolt? Well, um, 12 inch is considered standard for lever extension style bolts and that's going to work great with 6 foot 8 tall doors, 7 foot tall doors. But if I stand and put my hand all the way up, the tip of my hand is 84 inch. That's 7 foot. If I've got a 7 foot door and I come down 12 inch to get to the toggle for the flush bolt, I'll be able to reach that very average height. You get into an 8 foot door, now you start to need to think about, okay, I need a longer rod to bring that down. 18 inch um, is good. I like 24 inch. I like to add a foot, after, you know, from 7 foot, I like it right where it is. I like it six foot basically off the floor to the center of the uh, of the plate. I go to an eight foot door, I want a 24 inch rod, and then so on. But 18 inch is not unusual for an eight foot tall door. It's just gonna be a little bit higher up on the door, okay? That might be what you want, that might be, you know, the way you, you are, the way that you're designing the application. I'm doing a pair of eight foot door, uh, uh, an unequal pair of eight foot, um, I think they're 16 gauge hollow metal doors now for a client. He specified 18 inch. That's what they want. Um, now, the use of manual flush bolts, <clears throat> you're generally going to find them used in two applications residential, non fire rated, commercial, non fire rated, or commercial fire rated only when there is no potential for human occupancy on the inside of that room. So where you will have manual bolts, fire rated doors, we're talking about fire rated doors now. Fire rated doors um, must be self-closing and self-latching. A manual flush bolt is not gonna do that. Except the NFPA 80, the standard, has language that says in that application where you have a mechanical closet, that's you know eight foot wide by five foot deep or whatever it is. You can use flush bolts in that inactive door, manual flush bolts in a hospital, janitorial closets, communications closets, you know that sort of stuff. Because the logic is <clears throat> those doors are always closed and locked, and if they're unlocked and open, there's someone standing there, so they're never left basically unattended. So the logic is in that very particular application, is it very likely permissible to use a manual flush bolt? Okay, so be mindful. That's where you're using this stuff. Um, now there is information below this video, extended description, and a supporting document. Let's switch to the uh, screen view so we can take a look at all of that. Now, this is the item that we're looking at. This, this image of the flush bolt is indeed quite unusual. You would never see it rotated on its side. So I'm going to have the, um, I will have that image rotated 90 degree clockwise by the time you're seeing this video. Okay, so this would be rotate. I mean, it could be rotated 90 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise if it's a bottom facing bolt. But here's the extended description. 18 inch rod, again, that we'll go over that, but that's the top or the bottom of the door to the center of the faceplate of that six and three quarter faceplate. You're not gonna see um, flush bolts at the bottom other than 12 inch. Now there's no reason you can't have a bottom flush bolt at some dimension other than 12 inch. Um, and it's not unheard of. I've actually had people want them mounted up higher from the floor, like 36 inch, so they didn't have to bend over to use that. And I understand it's not a problem of bending over, but it could simply be a problem of bending over. You might not, you know, have, you know, that sort of physical mobility to do so. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, no, you don't want the bolt 12 inches off the floor. You probably want it brought up a little bit. So this is an 18 inch, solid forged brass. Of course, you're going to see solid brass cast and forged construction is standard by a high company a qu high quality product company like baldwin hot forged extension lever having over three quarter inch throw three quarter inch throw is in, of course very important um obviously for the reason where you say yes i want to have the bolt project into the frame an adequate amount but it's important because if you, this isn't a fire rated door 
the label on your door is going to say min latch throw or minimum latch throw. And yes, you have to have that sort of projection into the floor or into the header. So be mindful of that. Uh, you could probably use this as, in a fire rated application in a top manual bolt only with a fire bolt near the bottom of the installation, which is a which is a fire bolt is a device that is installed into one door with a strike in the other door that when the temperature hits a certain degree, low 200s, I believe, it will fire a bolt into the other door, locking the two leaves together. So that may be permissible to use a top manual flush bolt only with a bottom fire bolt, but I don't know that. It may be permissible. We'd have, you know, you'd have to check the standard. Is it adopted in the code? And then ultimately, does the local authority having jurisdiction approve that? Unique push button lever, design of lever, and delay action for easy operation. So when I when I operate this bolt from um, ball from Baldwin, I can tell you that it does occur to me that it requires slightly less force than a standard bolt. I may be imagining it, but I believe it to be slightly less force. Um, bolt lever lever does not engage the bolt until it is hinged freely to the 45 degree angle. That's true, as you move that lever, you don't have a upward or downward motion until you get to about 45 degrees. Um, that's important because when you initially begin to move the lever up and down, you'll have immediate substantial force because you're now moving the hardware. Baldwin's design delays that higher additional force because of the 45 degree or so angle. So it is not only easier to manipulate overall, the amount of force you get when you when your fingertips are at the very tip of that lever trying to move it is also delayed because you can get more of your hand because you're not engaging the bolt as early in the process because it's easy to move the bolt head. Lever snaps automatically when hinged beyond 45 degrees, sure. Made to template for easy, made to template for easy installation in metal door frames, meaning the Baldwin item matches the template pattern for an ANSI style strike, six and three quarter um, by one. Um, and I think bolt head five inch, rod back set three quarter inch, I think what they mean is the bolt head diameter is 0.5 inch. Putting my caliper on that, yeah, that's indeed the case. We're going to get that typo corrected. This should read the diameter of the bolt head is 0.5 inch. Now, as we continue to move down through our extended description, you'll see lots of finishes. This is very likely out of date at this point, um, although 190 satin black is here. You know, these are these are flush bolts, so they, they can do them in, in every finish practically. Now to the meat and potatoes. Let's move to the template. And this is going to be a document that shows, and this document's, okay, sure. So this document is 40 years old at this point, 42 years, 43 years old, 1986. So this product obviously hasn't changed. Um, and that's because it's a template pattern. This standard pattern for six and three quarter by one inch wide flush bolt has been a standard for I don't know how long. The point of the matter is this. It shows you how to how the door must be prepped. So they're going to give you ultimately all of the information you need. Six and three quarter tall, one inch wide. They said that it is a three quarter inch um, back set on the bolt. Uh, you see your half inch bolt diameter. You see your three quarter inch back set from the edge of the door to the center of the bolt is three quarter inch. And at the end of the day, it's going to look like this in the sense of this drawing, you know, is is in scale, but they're, you know, they've got a break line here where the top of the door is not being shown correctly. So the bottom line is if you're installing this into a steel door, that steel door should already be prepped for an ANSI style flush bolt. If it's a fire rated door, it must be prepped under label service. Okay. 
Now, if it's a wood door, I'm expecting that your wood door is prepped as well. And if your wood door is not prepped, well, let's discuss how we might go about prepping this into a wood door. Okay, so as we continue to move through our review of the Baldwin item, the next thing to talk about is how you're going to about, go about prepping the door for this. If you have a door that needs to be prepped, first of all, this is the wrong flush bolt to use if you have a wood door. There, uh, I don't believe Baldwin even manufactures what would be considered the correct flush bolt for the application. And let's take a look and see if they do. Okay, so we have their current book pulled up. I'm going to go, I'm going to look for 0600, and I do see the flush bolt here. So, an extension is not the best, is not the correct bolt to use. The 0626 is a correct bolt to use for a wood door, obviously when you can reach up and grab that because it's only six inch tall. The reason it's correct is because you can chisel the top of the door and the body. Well, when you get into an extension flush bolt, you can certainly chisel the body, but how in the gospel are you going to get that hole drilled down through the edge of the door at three-quarter back set and do so without rupturing the door? Well, you can. I've done it hundreds of times without, ex without exaggeration. The manual extension, however, are not considered correct um, because Prepping that material in the field for an extension does is classified as very difficult to get prepped. Okay. Now, an appropriate flush bolt to use for a wood door would be this corner style. Ives makes them, and I only mention someone other than Baldwin because they simply do not make one. And what is as you can see, you can wrap your head around how you would go about mortising for this unit. Okay. Now again, only going to be really good for doors up to about seven foot tall. But in the case of the Baldwin unit, the, the real challenge is you can prep the body. You can go inch and a quarter deep. You can go, they're showing um, 15 sixteenths wide. Okay. They're showing five and three quarter overall height for the body of the unit. Then the plate is going to be six and three quarter by one point one two five thick. Okay. Now that's easy. Here's the challenge. How do you drill that hole from the top or the bottom of the door straight all the way down into the cavity? That's the challenge. Um, there is, I have, like as I said earlier, I've done this hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times. You, there is a template, a guide template that is manufactured for this exact purpose, and it includes a drill bit. And 99% of the time, it goes pretty flawlessly. There are times when it's trouble because if I were to look at the door laying on its side, if I've got it prepped and I want to put my flush bolt prep here. Again, my challenge is to drill that hole. Well, looking at it in cross section, I need to put a hole right here all the way down through the thickness of the door. Well, there is a clamp fixture that clamps onto the edge of the door. It literally clamps down and the fixture comes off the face. Actually, let's say it's like this like this and I can then it gives me an area a bushing to run my drill bit through and as you go in one inch you come out two inches you go in one inch and you remove and you bring that wood out and you will um, have success in getting that done the only trouble is you know you've got a style that's the lumber of, of which the door is made and then you've got your particle core and then of course the veneer covers all of this the issue is you'll have material with disparate densities from here to here. Okay, you could have softwood here, you could have hardwood. So sometimes that bit wants to do this. Okay, or even worse, it wants to do this. So you got to be mindful that it's not easy to do that. And that is a major reason 
why um, people are not to do it in the field. And we do sell this extension fixture. This is what it's made for. This is the tool that you use. And I have, again, used this hundreds of times. And it does work very well. And if you have to do it, the only thing you'll need to order is a longer drill bit, which we can, of course, help you with that as well. So be mindful. Uh, manual flush bolts in wood doors that are not that are not prepped are not meant to go together, but you can successfully do it. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, I'm an unabashed, um, unapologetic fan of Baldwin, um, and it's because. They've got great quality products. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I don't love everything they do. I don't like their hinges with their their decorative tips. They're, it's all beautiful hardware. Beautiful. The fit and finish is world class. But as you tighten your decorative tips onto your hinges, those tips will, even with thread lock, come loose. They do, over time, come loose because the hinge is open. The door is open and closing. That ball tip, that's or stir, urn tip or steeple tip, is going to eventually work its way loose as the door opens and closes and opens and closes. Um, the same concept is with set screws that hold their material on. Uh, historically, I've not been a big fan of that, but when it comes to um, options, design choices, finishes, my goodness, if you can't find it from Baldwin, um, you know, uh, it may it may not exist may not exist at all. I'm also a fan of them from a technical perspective, from a old hardware person perspective. I've called them. I had a client with some mortise cases, mortise locks that were from the second half of the 1970s. They needed, they, the lock stopped working. The, the client who was a distributor of hardware called me for tech support, needing to order the locks as well. And he says, you know, I need, I need these two locks. It's a, it's a institution lock. It's a New England application, a Cape Cod, Baldwin mortise lock knobs. Both knobs are rigid um, unless you unlock it. Um, that's just the way it was. He says, yeah, this is all everything that I need. And he doesn't understand the Baldwin terminology. So there's a bit of a disconnect. But we worked through all of it. And during, later in the conversation, he said, you know, all I really need is a spring. I says, how do you know that? He says, well, I took the lock apart and could clearly see that the spring was broken or missing. I says, wait. Kind of a long shot, but I called Baldwin, and every time I call them, I get perfect technical support. Perfect. Customer service as well. Called, asked for technical support, hang on. Gentleman came to the phone, answered it, explained to him the scenario, and he said, does that have a blue case, a blue mortise lock case? I says, it sure does. I can see the pictures. What year? 1977, he said. He says, shoot, I was working in the on the manufacturing line during those years, I can tell you all about the lock, and it's likely that I actually made that lock. So not only did the gentleman know what I was talking about, but he knew the exact spring we needed. And guess what? We were able to get a spring. So when you make a decision about investing a lot of money into hardware, you're building a home or remodeling a home, you're not just going to spend a few hundred dollars on hardware. You're going to spend possibly several thousands of dollars, tens of thousands. Do you want a company that is, is, do you want to buy material from a company that you can't get that sort of support from? Because it's my opinion that you can't get that level of support from other manufacturers of decorative hardware that are offshore based. So be mindful of that. You're not just, it's like a marriage. It's just not the honeymoon. Okay. It's the, it's the whole marathon. So be mindful to attach your cart to, to the horse that you want pulling it. And that's one reason that I continue to use Baldwin every time that I do a new project. And I will always suggest it. Is it the cheapest? Don't, nope. If you're looking for the cheapest, see what's on the for sale bench at the, at the, at the local lumber yard. Um, great quality product. There's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Baldwin products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, uh, which is ever evolving, ever changing. There's also a link to several documents, uh, encyclopedic documents, reference documents, primarily catalogs, where you can review all of their material. Baldwin is a bit intimidating in the sense that um, their part numbers, it's initially intimidating. Because when you buy a mortise lock, you need to specify the trim, 
the knob or lever if you're deviating from the standard, the lock case, the cylinder, the strike, a thumb turn. You can detail all those. So what makes Baldwin simultaneously a bit intimidating is also what's so great about them. You can mix and match, piece and pull from their catalog. If you don't like the thumb turn that comes with it and you want the beaded thumb turn, order the beaded thumb turn. You want to have a, you know, rather than have a the uh, type of lever that would come with the Versailles trim and you want to do something else, do something else. It's not a problem. Their catalog makes all of that available. Any questions on the Baldwin 0600 flush bolt and a 190 finish or any other Baldwin product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.